Thank you, Jesus. Word of the Lamb Ministries welcomes you to Sunday message. Amen. Glory to God. I thank God for each and every one of you for joining on the line, for being on the conference line, for being in the places that you are. Amen. Glory to God. And if you're if you're uh, on the conference line and you have noise in the background, just uh, press four star. Amen. And for other individuals, amen. If you if you know where your mute buttons are, you can press those as well. God bless you, sisters. Morales, I am so happy just to even know that you're on here. And amen, you made my day. I'm smiling right now. And we're all over. I'm smiling. Good morning, Lady Sunshine. Good morning for everybody who's on the phone line today. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. We want to get our... Um, our... Um, our announcements in and out the way amen and we want to be able to um, move in every direction amen good morning evangelist Diane hooks amen glory to God we love you this morning amen anybody who wants to join us on zoom amen I sent you the link uh, uh, this one that says um, corrected one on there amen you can join on and say hello to us that way if you like or you could be on facebook and be with us like 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 my my sister on this side or you could you don't like any of those options you can still come join us on our conference line and if you can't do that and can't get in because it gets too big or too busy for you i sent some people a zoom co code glory to god just to call in on the conference line so amen there's all ways around it and i want to say good morning but first we're going to get the announcements in and out the way you know but before we start i want to say happy mother's day to each and every one of you i want to thank you for being the mothers that you are you know and i appreciate you I know that your children appreciate you because if it wasn't for you, they wouldn't be here. Amen. You know, you. and if they don't tell you I, that you that they love you, I'm going to tell you, I love you. All of you. you. All right. Looking all wonderful. Look at that. I got some I got some pretty evangelists, y'all. You know, I got some pretty I got some pretty sisters. I got some pretty brothers. I got some handsome brothers, too. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I love y'all all. And I want to get the announcements in and out the way. So I'm going to turn this over to Evangelist Lady Sunshine. Amen. Glory to God. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and happy Mother's Day to every mom and Mr. Mom in the World Wide Web. Amen. Our official church without walls. Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministry. Feeding your faith and doubt will starve. We'd like to invite everyone on Monday at 7 p.m. for our Bible study with our own minister, John L. Tuesdays and Thursdays on the prayer line where we will pray for you and with you. A wonderful time at 7 p.m. in the presence of the Lord in prayer. And we all worldwide need it. We'd like to invite everyone every other Wednesday for our fantastic book club with our own sister, Anita Chapel from South Carolina. For time and date and the book that we will be reading, Thank you, God. please go to www.wordofthelamb.org. It's going to be a fun, good time. So join us for our book club. And every Friday, for a Friday word at 7 p.m., where many times we have guest speakers and Bible challenges. You never know what's going on on Friday Encouraging Word, but you are guaranteed a good time in God. So we welcome everyone to join us for a Friday Encouraging Word at 7 p.m. And every first Saturday, of the month, we have yes, first fruit prayer between 12 p.m.
p.m. and 1 p.m. in the afternoon with our own evangelist, Diane Hood. Yes, From no. New York. So we welcome everybody every first Saturday, first group prayer. Also, we have an exciting women's auxiliary. Glory to God. International Ladies of Distinction. Facilitated and coordinated by our own evangelist outlaw from Connecticut. Amen. So we welcome you to inquire and join us for an exciting time of international leading ladies. For more information, you can email the evangelist outlaw for more information and membership and participation at word of the lamb at outlook.com. Word of the Lamb at Outlook.com. So we thank each and every one of you. Um, and join us on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook and like us all at the same time. Because we love you. And Jesus loves you. And there you will find our latest events happening. And new events happening on Facebook. You'll find out when you follow us. Also, Amen. we'd like to invite everyone in this ministry and globally to join and participate on all of our services, especially at our Unity Prayer. Sponsored by the leading lady of this ministry, Stephanie Bryan. So we'd like to invite everyone for Unity Prayer. It is Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. Again at 12 p.m. And again at 6 p.m. in the evening. And you can join us via text. We can give you notifications. And on our Facebook page, you can see the notifications as well. Unity prayer. So we need to unite as the body of Christ for time to be Please press your mute button if you haven't so that we can all listen to the word, and those that will listen to this word later can hear it with clarity and precision. And if you're on the teleconference line, feel free to press for star to mute your phone and for star to unmute your phone as praise and worship is freely done. And we thank God for that. Again, We'd like to thank everybody from the United States and abroad and globally for joining us in your financial support and generous giving to Word of the Lamb Worldwide Ministries and joining us to complete our mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout all four corners of the world. And through your generous support and giving, this is being accomplished through different forms of communication. So we thank you for that. You can mail your generous donation to P.O. Box 320391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. Again, our mailing address is P.O. Box 320391, Hartford, Connecticut, 06132. And again, we thank you. And we'd like to give a quick shout out to the people whose birthday is in May. To Brother Steve, our brother in Christ. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you. We'd like to give a shout out, happy birthday to my son, Debbie. His Amen. birthday is in this month, next week. And to the smallest member of my family who is going to be two years old next week, baby Eli. So we'd like to give a shout out to every other person that we may have forgotten what God has it. And we welcome for you to shout out on Facebook that this month is your birthday. And we'll celebrate God for giving you every single year and every breath on a daily basis. So we thank you for that. And we'd like to give a special warm shout out to Gaddy. Nana Gaddy is 103 years old. Amen. She could lift off a couple of pages from that book. And she's listening to us from her iPad. And we'd like to thank Bridget Gaddy, our sister.
thanks to Bridget Getty for making that possible. Amen. We thank you for your labor of love, and we give very warm welcome to everyone listening to us. And uh, it's really nice and happy Mother's Day. Celebrate yourself today and do something wonderful. Thinking of you today. So, and we'd like to give a warm, happy Mother's Day to First Lady Stephanie Bryant. We love you, we miss you, and we want to wish you a very warm, happy Mother's Day. We will turn these services over now to our own beloved Pastor Bryant. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lady Sunshine. I very much appreciate it. And once again, happy Mother's Day to you. And for those that are on Facebook, promise you'll see me in a minute. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. I have to do some adjusting to uh, to get you get get some things in there. So just bear with me. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. My sister, Sister Morales, says that happy Mother's Day to all the sisters on the line. Amen. Glory to God to each one of you. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm going to let you know that today, hallelujah, I won't be before you very long. I just have a, a word for you, amen, that God has given me. Amen. I know that there's a, um, we have a lot of people celebrating Mother's Day, and I need, I want you to enjoy the, the rest of your day, but I want to talk to you something in it, and actually, from some people, they would talk about mothers today, and today is, uh, I, I was going in that direction, but that's not where God put me at. So, amen. We have to be there. Amen. Glory to God. Um, I'm going to unmute some people. Amen. All right. Glory to God. Amen. So, everybody is unmuted to, to their thing so we can get some glory shouts going on today. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Evangelist Hooks. God bless you. Hallelujah. All right, all right, wonderful. I'm glad to hear you. Glad to hear your voice. Well, hallelujah. There's my sister Bridget, and good morning, Nana. Good morning to you, and happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day to you, Nana. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We love you all. We love you all. We love you, Bridget. We love you. No, oh, amen. It's good to see Sister Bridget in the house. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to see Sister Shaylin in the house. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. It's good to see them in the house. It's good to see you in the house. Amen. Glory to God. It's good to see uh, Evangelist Diane Hooks in the house. It's good to see uh, Evangelist Lady Sunshine in the house. And it's good to see Sister Anita in the house today. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Right, amen. Before we get started, I want you to put uh keep uh um evangelist outlaw and her family up in prayer. Amen. As um God has called home one of one of uh, um um brother Henry's uh cousins, amen. You know that he was close to, mm -hmm. amen. And um so they're they're in the midst of uh um being around and do, doing some things with family and taking care of some stuff and amen keep uh uh keep brother henry up in prayer and keep the evangelist outlaw up in prayer keep them up in prayer amen because everybody going through difficult times at times amen amen, amen. so we have to make amen. sure we do that amen glory to god is that important glory to god amen hallelujah jesus hallelujah god well, I want to get started. Amen. I want to make sure we get started. Can you hear me? Amen. Amen. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you right now, Father God, knowing that all things work in your will. Lord, we ask you that you move in every direction, Father. God, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of thy God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Father, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen, amen, and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. For those that are on Zoom, please understand that your the microphone is so sensitive it picks up every little thing. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Picks up every little piece. Hallelujah, Jesus. But we thank you, 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 God. Hallelujah. Once again, happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you upon the line. Glory to God. And I can't wait to get started. I'm going to try to do my best so I can get you in the way and out the way. Amen. 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 Well, glory to God. I'm not going to give you my title just yet. Amen. But I want to talk about something that um God laid on my heart. I didn't want to talk about it. But he told me I had to talk about it. So I'm going to talk about it. All right. Stay Amen. with me now. I ain't want to talk about it because, you know, I thought about I thought about some past stuff and some of the things that it done and it and it and it hit me on this one. So you know, the word come to you first, right? Amen. But let me ask y'all a question because you know I'm a question person. Have you ever heard of lip service? Have you ever heard of lip service? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I got you. I got you. Don't worry about it. I got you. Amen. Have you ever heard of lip service? And if you heard of lip service, have you ever have been around anyone? Or anyone? Have you ever been around somebody? Anybody? Someone? Who talk more than they... Who talk more than anything else? You know, for those that don't know about lip service, that means it's just this. Amen. You know, lip service means that the people are talking with their mouth, but they ain't doing nothing else. You know, lip, lip service are, are for the people who have a good conversation. Amen. But they're on the other side. They ain't moving. Amen. Talk about it. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. Have you ever been around a person who talks more than anybody else or anything else? And I want to ask you a question. Were you that person doing the talking? See, when God asked me that question, I had to reflect back to sometimes when I might have said some stuff to some people and not followed through. Kind of hit me in a certain area. You know, I got to go back and apologize to some people because, you know, I'm, I'm sorry for some people because I'm, they, I'm hoping they ain't still on the corner waiting for me to come pick them up because I did tell them I'd be right back, <laughs> you know, and I, it, it been many years. So I'm noted that hopefully they kept moving because if they still on the same corner, I ain't there yet, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but the next time I see you, I will pick you up, <laughs> you know, amen. Glory to God. That's the that honest truth, though. When you think about it, you know, have you ever been so excited about something because of all the talk? And when you see it or you do it, you get so disappointed. Uh. Have you ever been uh, so excited to go see a movie because they hype it up and they show you all these scenes in the movie and you say, man, this is going to be one good movie. And when you get there, you find out that the only scenes that are good is the ones that you've seen on the television. And the rest of the movie was terrible. And it could have been the movie. You could have been excited to go to a place. Could have been a place to eat. And you people raved about how great it was. And when you got there, it was really terrible. You might have gotten to a place where... You say, you know, people said, oh, man, I'm I, I, I'm here and, you know, and they describe their, their place as a palace. And when you get there, you realize that the home you in makes that one looks wonderful. But to maybe in their eyes, it is a palace. Amen to that, you know, 
or you've gone someplace and you've mm -hmm. been so disappointed because you thought it was going to be a good place. You read about it in books, you hear about it in magazines, and when you get there, you realize it's just not what you thought it would be. And sometimes mm -hmm. you're disappointed because of the person. See, because sometimes, you know, you're excited about talking with a person and being around them and hanging with them and even sometimes just just uh, getting to know somebody. And then you realize that you are disappointed by any particular means. And if you were disappointed, you now have a mind... You have a very, 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 very less expectation of whatever it may be. That anticipation that you had before is on hold. And in the back of your mind is put up or shut up. Mm, talk about it. See, I, 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 I've been there on both sides of the situation, amen. You see, I've been on the side of the situation where I've talked more and action less. I've been on the situation where I've heard people talk more and actions less. Uh. It's been to the point where sometimes you had to put up or shut up and find yourself either putting up and sometimes even shutting up. And when you feel that way, some don't want to even be bothered. Uh, or in the back of their mind, they're saying, yeah, right. Whatever you're doing, yeah, right. We know that it's not going to turn out that way. They don't have that much confidence in you. Uh -huh. And then there's the times when you care about someone or something. Amen. Stay with me, y'all. I'm trying to bring you someplace. And you care about someone or something, and you're hoping there will be a change soon. You're hoping that they change their heart. You're hoping that they change their mind. You're hoping that they change their thoughts. You're hoping that everything that they do is going to be a change. Because you really care for that person. You really care for them. And you're saying to them, I really want a change. But you're, you're, you're looking for a change in an area, and they're not looking to change. They've said to you many times, I'm, I'm, I'm going to change, I'm, I'm going to stop drinking, I'm going to stop smoking, I'm going to stop doing whatever it is that they're doing. But yet you, you say to yourself, okay, we're going to do that, and all of a sudden, a month later or two weeks later, and sometimes even a day later, and sometimes even hours later, they're back to doing the same thing. See, they just created lip service to you. They told you what you wanted to hear to get you to a certain point, and then they went back about their business. See, that's how it is sometimes in this world that we live in, that people have to get an understanding of is that the enemy will tell you some things that you want to hear just to keep you in a certain place. See, because he'll tell you all the things that they're going to do and all the things that are going to happen to you, but there's no substance behind it. There's no strength behind it. He knows that I'm going to tell you this with the inevitable thought of no matter where you are, no matter how far you got up the ladder, sooner or later you're going to hit that oil spot and you're going to fall. You see, when we're around some people, we're hoping and we're caring that they'll be there and we hope that they won't let us down. How many of y'all have been in that situation where you hoping that the person is going to do right, you're giving them another chance to do something right, and you're hoping that they don't let you down? Mm, amen. 
and how many times have you been on the other side and people have given you chances and they're hoping that you don't let them down and you said what you had to say but eventually you let them down see I've been in those situations I've been in both sides of that coin amen so when you're on that both sides of that coin it's a it's a beat up cause this 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 word might not be for y'all but uh it's for me so i'm i'm making sure that i get this because you know i'm trying to correct every area that i have amen amen see now when you say something to god mm. when we make a promise to do something for jesus we must remember what has been told in the bible see numbers 30 and two sells us if a man vows and i'm reading from the king james version on this particular thing if a man vows a vow unto the lord or swears an oath to bind his soul with a bond he shall not break his word he shall not do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth he shall do all according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth he shall do according to his out of his mouth when you make a vow to the Lord do not break it Amen. there's been times when we have talked on our hearts and we said Lord if you get me out of this I'm not going to do that and you really sincerely meant it at the moment. But as moment that things start to get a little bit better, you, you start to figure that you might can compromise. Uh -huh. And you might say to yourself, oh, well, you know, I, I'm not going to do this yet, but I, I'm going to do the other half of it. Well, uh -huh. people of God, you got to understand some things. See, there's people who have been saved and they go to the church building. Uh. Amen. They talk well. They sing well. They praise well. They even preach well. And while they're in the building, Christians 90 percent of the time you better go ahead I didn't say a hundred I said 90 percent of the time why they're in the building and why and they will help you if it benefits them or if they see some others doing it But if they can find their way out the door, they're gone faster than the road runner being chased uh -huh. by the coyote. Uh, 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 uh. You know the people who I'm talking about, the ones that come to church and they get their praise on. They get slain. Uh -huh. They get they get slain and they hear it. You know, they sang their songs. They walk up and down in the aisles. They have that form of godliness, but no power. They sit back and they tell you about things, but they're not doing it. They were hanging out a few minutes before they came into church and cussed somebody out on the phone. Uh -huh. Closed the phone up, walked in the door and said, praise the Lord. And started acting uh -huh. as though they had been reading their Bible all week. My Lord. See, they're talking with a lot of lip service. They're speaking in a lot of ways. Some of them feel that they're gone somewhere, but they 
some of them feel that as soon as they get to church, they got to run to the altar. Now, I'm not saying that all these things aren't done by everybody else and, and all the other people doing the things that they're doing. And they're doing it because they're doing it unto God. But there's some who just doing it to be seen or to be talked about. That's right. Talk to be able it. to be known that I'm, I can do this. To be heard, oh, he can pray, she can pray. Oh, they can preach, he can preach, she can preach. They're looking for are so earthly bound. Uh -huh. They're spending a lot of time, hallelujah. Trying to please their inner selves. Uh -huh. That they're forgetting about Jesus. Oh no, he's in there. And oh yeah, he's first. As long as it's benefiting them. See, those are some of the same people who might run to the altar of God and or to the padellas to confess and to ask for forgiveness and to let go of things along with other people because there's so many other people who are running to the altar for these things but they're running to the altar because they're looking for a change they're looking for something to happen amen that's right they're looking for a, a new direction a new place to become a new creature. See, when you start to talk about what you're going to do or asking God what you want to say, come on, I want to bring you somewhere. I want to get you someplace. I want to get you this understanding that when you start speaking to God about what you're getting ready to do, what you want to do, you're talking from it from your mouth or are you giving it from your heart? Uh. See, because when you give something from your mouth, anything can spill out of it. But when it comes from your heart, you're trying to make a change. Amen. We are so caught up sometimes with people praying and they're praying with so many things and it seems like they're praying with power and it seems like they're moving in a direction. But if their heart is not right within it, amen, it might move everybody else, but it ain't moving them. And they're asking for forgiveness and letting go of the things that we are convicted of. And some of us, we're trying to get better. And some of us are just trying to get over. See, the ones that are trying to get better, they know that they're giving all to God and they're going to try to walk on the path that God is going to. And I'm going to just give it my best try. Yes, you might falter, you might fall, but yet you're going to continue to keep trying. Amen. But there's some that's been around for so long who have been there and they ain't trying. They're just there. Amen. It's almost like it's a social meetup. better known as Club Sunday. Uh. See, they go there and they, they get their, their, their glory shout on and as, and as soon as they get out of, out of church and they try to get out of church very early, they try to be the first one at the door. They try not to get there too, too early and they don't want to get there too late because then they don't want to hear from the pastor. They roll up in there and they try to, to do some things. And if they are on something, they're only going to give a certain amount of percentage of time and effort. Amen. These are the same people who will show up early. Just like everybody else will. And everybody else, this is the truth because everybody does it. They'll show up early when they know they got company of people who they know are going to show. 
We all come in early then. You got these people who are running over there and they're trying to convince you and they're trying to just get better and they're trying to get over. Uh -huh. But I have to say, hold up to you. Amen. This is not, I know this might not be that kind of message that you're looking for on a Mother's Day, but I'm trying to give you something real quick in here because I want you to have this understanding that of this. And when I give you my title, you'll understand it. But I'm not going to give you my title just now. You're going to have to just wait just a little bit. But I want to hold you up just for a second. I want to put a stop right now. I want to say, hold up. Wait a minute. For those who think they're getting over, uh -huh. you must have this understanding. You must not know who you're trying to get over on. Uh -huh. Do you really know who you're trying to get over on? You can fool a congregation. You can fool the pastor or think you're fooling the pastor. Uh -huh. You can fool the people around you. Or thank you fooling the people around you. Because discerning spirits let you know a lot of things. Amen. See, because it's not there always in your actions. And sometimes it's in your words. Sometimes it's not your words, but it's your actions. Amen. Amen. You have to know that if you're going to walk in a certain way, walk in the way. The difference is, if I, let's, let's put it this way. If you told me how to make a cake, and I followed your instructions and it came out right, mm -hmm. and you'll say, good, now you got it. Follow my instructions and you'll get it right. Mm -hmm. But what happened if I told you that I followed your instructions? But the moment that you took a slice of the cake, you realize that I didn't do anything that you said. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. You will say to yourself, this don't taste right. You will say to yourself or say to that person, I think you missed something. Mm -hmm. Don't you know God is saying that to us now? Something not right, or it don't taste right. Maybe you missing something. Amen. This message might not be for you. This message is for me. Amen. Talk about it. No, I'm trying to sharpen myself up. I want to make sure that I'm all right. I want to make sure that I'm doing well. I want to make sure that I'm moving in the right direction. I want to make sure that I'm doing the things they're doing. Oh, and I want to, I want to, I want to go back just for a second. How many of y'all have invited some people to church? They said they was going to come. Took the opportunity to give you a number. And some of them even called to ask for, for the information again. You give them the information. You write it all down and said, all right, I'm going to get online. And you don't hear from them no more. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, because maybe they were busy in something else. Maybe they had to be about whatever their father had assigned for them to do. But for some of them, amen, they'll tell you that every week. Glory to God. I hope you can hear me. And I hope I didn't. I hope somebody, I didn't drop somebody, amen. Stay with me. Can you still hear me over there on the conference line? Somebody say amen. Am I still on there? Amen. Glory to God. I believe I am. I just don't believe the person is speaking. Amen. I got excited about that. Because... You talk to some people, give you the same information, amen. And the more and more they ask you the same information, you give it to them, and guess what? They don't show up. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
There used to be times in my life, I got to stop right here and tell you the truth now, because you tell the truth, you shame the devil. There's some times in my life I told some people I'd be right back. I said that earlier. And I said I'd be right back. And I didn't come back. I had told some people I was busy doing some stuff because I had some other things I wanted to do. And I was busy doing something and I couldn't come out, but I could come out. There's some times when I told some people that I was going to come to church with them. I thought, yeah, I'm coming to church with you, man. And then on the day that they come to church, I had a better offer to go do something that was more secular. And I went to go do that. End up that I should have went to church because it probably would have saved me a little bit more heart, heart, heartache or headaches. You know, when you talk about it with your lip service, which means that you're talking about it out your lips and you're not doing anything about it. It's like somebody telling you that they're going to come over your house and, and they said they're going to be with you. They're going, I'm coming over your house today and you expect them to come over and they don't come. It's like cooking a meal with somebody and you, you, somebody says they're going to come over and they're going to come and have a meal with you. You make the meal and you do all the things and then they can't come. Or they don't show up. Or they have an excuse as to why they can't come. And the excuse is something that you said could have been, you could have told me earlier. Because if you had told me earlier, I might have would have been all right. But I want to let you know that you're not getting over on me or you're not getting over on the people. You're trying to get over on God. You're trying to get over on the person who created the world and the universes. Now, if you're trying to get over on the person that created the world and the universes, do you really think that you're really trying to get over on somebody? No, it's not happening in such a way. See, the Bible tells us this. In Numbers, the 23rd and the 16th, excuse me, in the Numbers 23 and 19, and I'm reading right now from the English Standard Version. God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. He said, and will he not do it? And he also spoke, and will he not? fulfill it. The Lord keeps his word. Have you kept yours? See, the Bible tells us in Malachi 3 and 6, for I am the Lord, I change us not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. When, we, when you make the change to do more than you are doing to fulfill the vow you made to the Lord. When will you do that? When will you make that change? When will you say to yourself, I need to be about it and not just something? Sometimes we have to be able to close ourselves from some stuff. Sometimes we got to be able to walk the walk. If you saved, be saved. If you are believe in the Lord, believe in the Lord. And when you get an opportunity to speak about him, speak about him. But don't say that you're going to do it and you don't do it. And you put it out your mind and you do something totally different. And you say to yourself, self, I guess it'll be all right. Ecclesiastes 5 and 4 says like this, When thou vowest a vow unto God, defer not to pay it. What does that mean? It means if you got a vow, you're not supposed to say, Oh, I'm going to pay it later. I'm going to do it later. If you made a vow and said, God, if you do this for me, I'm going to do this on this day, you better be doing it. For he has no pleasure in fools. 
pay that which thou hast vowed. Verse 5, Ecclesiastics 5 and 5. Better it that thou should not voweth, than thou should voweth and not pay. Meaning, it's better for you to close your mouth and not say something and stuff like that because as many times now, I'm just reminding you, I'm bringing you back on some old promises. I'm trying to get you out of those things because there's some old promises that you said to God, God, if you get me out of this, I'm going to do something. There was a song out there that says, God, if you get me out of this one, I'll never do this again. You know? And you found yourself doing it again. And then you go back and you ask God to help you and he helps you again and you find yourself doing it again. But the bowels have to be paid. It says, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Suffer not thy mouth to cause the flesh to sin. Some of the stuff that you have out of your mouth, that lip service will cause you to sin. Especially if you know that it's something that you cannot fulfill when it comes to God. Mm-hmm. Neither say thou before the angels, this is that it was an error. Wait a minute. Don't say unto the angels, oh, wait a minute. I ain't mean to say that. The moment that you open up your mouth and you spoke that to God, that's binding. Because when God spoke something to you, it's binding. When he said, I'm going to do this for you, it's binding. When he says, I'm going to love you like that, it's binding. When it says, I will return this, it's binding. When he says that I'm going to make sure that those places get straight, it's binding. And when we say something to God and we're supposed to do something for the Lord, it's binding. But have you done what you're supposed to do? Have you made the payments of your vows? Hmm? Wherefore, should God be angry at the voice and destroy the work of thy hands? Hmm? If God was to sit there and see what your voice said, he could get angry at your voice and destroy the works of thy hands. That means that everything that you built up will be torn down because you didn't pay the vow that God told you to pay. And all it was was that you said, that, Lord, if you do this, I'm going to praise you. Well, praise him. Lord, if I... If you if you will help me out out of this situation, I'm going to spend a little bit more time in church. And for those who are doing just that, thank you for paying your vows. For those who are, whatever you have asked, told God you was going to do, and you're doing it, and you fulfill that, I thank you for doing it. It ain't got nothing to do with me. Everything that you do has something to do with yourself. I cannot open the doors of heaven for you. I can point you in a direction, give you the words and the things that you need, the tools that are necessary to bring you there. But the only person that can walk you through the door is yourself. And oh, well, I'm sorry. Let me put it this way. We all going to walk through the doors. I believe the only person that will keep you staying there is yourself. See, because we get judged for what we do. So, if we get judged for what we do, that's why this pastor right here, I do, have to tell you this word because the word was given to me to tell you this. 
because I want you to understand something. And believe me, you'll understand it when I give you my title. See, people of God, it's time to start making that change. It's time to keep your word that the vow that you have. And as they heard about it in one of my uh, evangelists will tell you, don't talk about it. Be about it. It's a word that she always used. The God has kept his word and he does not change or fall. When you make a vow, do you mean it from your heart? My title for you today is just this. It don't mean a thing if you don't make that change. My title for you today is it don't mean a thing if you don't make that change. See, because we had spent a whole lot of time, either we're talking a lot or we're saying what we're going to do. But see, here's a time is put up or shut up time. So you got to commit to what you're going to do with the Lord. You got to understand that what I'm going to do, I'm not going to say and just say it. We make those same type of vows on a New Year's and you say, oh, I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to budget my money correctly. And every year you say the same thing over and over again and you still got the same results. That's right. But when you do something for God and you say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to pray more and you start praying more, you start to see some stuff happening that doesn't exactly happen around you before. Oh, you start to see the Lord's blessings start to fall all around you. You'll start to see some things happening all around you. You'll start to see the people moving all around you. You'll start saying, I'm not just going to talk about it, but I'm going to do some things. I'm going to, I said that I was going to church and I was coming to church, but yet something prevented me from doing it. And what was preventing you from doing it? Oh, the new television show you watching? Because if you got cable, you can record anything. Matter of fact, if you got cable and you can record it, you can record it on the fly. You don't even have to be in the same household to record something. You can record it and it'd be recorded on your own television. And you can play it back later. Mm-hmm. How many of y'all have took the opportunity you don't have to give me a show of hands. You don't have to give me a show of thoughts. You don't have to give me a show of any particular thing. All you have to do is give me this. How many of us have had our lip service, as they say, talked about something but haven't fulfilled it? I know that I have. I know that there's been many a times that I've done that. And it's been many times that I've been on both ends. And when you've been on the receiving end, and when you've been on the, 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 the giving end, you'll start to understand what you need to do. Sometimes you have to do some things that you don't want to do. Because some of the things that you do will make you feel uncomfortable. But when it comes to being around God, when you say to pick up your Bible and start to read and you say, I don't have a Bible. And if somebody has offered you one, but yet you still haven't took the opportunity to take it. Who's putting up the delay? Hmm. If you sit up there and somebody wants to help you do something or teach you to do something, but you don't want to take the opportunity to do that because 
you can't find the time to get it done. Did you ask whether they have availability in the time from, that you might have? And maybe they might not have the ability in that time, but maybe they have somebody else that they know that does have it and they can make sure that they make the transition and have you do some things comfortably and they know that it's somebody that they trust that would teach you in a certain way. And all, I just want to let you know for all those that are on the line and all those who are listening, if you ever have an opportunity and you say to yourself, I want to have a question, I want to talk with you, you email me, word of the lamb at outlook.com. We'll have a conversation. You need to just let me know who you are. Let me know um, what the question is and I, I'll get back to you if I know it. And if I don't know the question, we'll find it out together. But you don't just have to ask me. You can ask the evangelists. You can ask the sisters and the brothers on this line. Because when we take an opportunity to walk forward, when we take an opportunity to be in front of Jesus, when we take an opportunity, men and women of God, to go and say, I'm going to go and do this. The blessings start to fall. There's changes in your family. Now, it ain't going to be all sweet and buttery. Because there's a resistance like never before when you're changing. When you go out there and say you're going to do it. How many times have people said that they were going to tune in to hear you speak on a day that you're speaking only not to be there in the first place? And what do you do? Do you count on them or you don't count on them? Do you move with them or you don't move with them? It is because of what God has before you that you have to do something. I got to be about my father's business is what Jesus said. I can't no longer just sit here and talk about it without putting the action into it for it. It's like telling somebody that you love them and not showing any love. See, because I believe that love is an action word. Yes, it is. And unless you take action upon it, it can't do some things. But in the world of God and the things that you put before God, and the things that you asked him for, you have to put the action in it. The Bible says this, faith without works is dead. So you can have all the faith that you got, but you didn't put any work into it. It ain't going to produce any fruit. It's like going out there and putting a plant in the ground and then go back and just look at it every day hoping that it will grow even if you didn't put any water on it having the faith to know that something's going to take root but knowing that if you don't do the work to help it out it ain't going to happen it's like having a conversation with somebody who just got saved and then after they get saved they leave them alone it happens so much in today's world where people get left alone because of the things you're saved now and you're saved and you're good but you're not good until you learn about what it is that God wants you to do somebody's got to walk you through it if your baby has a chance to walk they're reaching out for your hand for steadiness but you're not going to let that same baby run into the middle of traffic. Amen. That's right. And if you said that I'm going to take care of your child and you put it out there in front of them, these are the things that I'm going to do. 
and you come back and your child is being taken care of by somebody and the same clothes that you left them in and the same diaper that they're in on and the same dirt that was on them and the same hunger that was in them was happening at the same time, how would you feel? Because you'll be mad at that person for not being able to take care of what you had already expected them to do. But yet, in the spiritual world, when you do the same thing for God and you sit back and he's expecting it to get done, how do you think he feels? And how do you feel doing it to him? You better go ahead. See, because you don't give us... Mm, let me be quiet. You don't care. Let the Lord use you. You don't care what he says. You're doing it. You're, you're getting through and you're getting by. I'm getting over as they think. And all these things are being added up. And you don't even know about it. See, because there's something that has to be paid eventually. And God said, okay. One day, while you're sitting there, in the midst of something, <clears throat> you might be feeling miserable. You might be saying to yourself, I'm not right. And the Lord says, today I still need you to get up and go outside and do something. And you might say, you want me to go outside and do something. And if you are feeling obedient at that time, you're going to go outside and do something. And the Lord says that you've done it. You have paid the vow that I've asked you to do. I'm only telling you because this is what happened to me. See, because I was supposed to tell somebody something and I refused to do it. And the Lord woke me up one day, made me go outside in the middle of the night put my coat on in the middle of the winter time and told me to bring a rake. And I went outside and brought a rake. And while I was in a spot, he said, rake right here. And while I was there, the same person walked by. And I turned around and said, I got to tell you something. And this was late that night, somewhere after midnight. And the Lord put it upon my heart to talk to them. And they received the word that I had to say. And then I said, I don't know why I was here, but the Lord put me here. And I know it looked ridiculous for me to have a rake out here at this particular time. But I had to have this because this is the way it should be. Amen. <laughs> because maybe what the Lord had told that person is that when you walk down this way, the person right here who has a rake and a coat on in the middle of the winter time is the person going to tell you what I want you to hear. Amen. Amen. When we make a vow to the Lord and when the Lord tells us something, we got to take the opportunity to try to do it. Amen. I know it might be hard. People of God, it might be hard. Some of us, to, so some of us, it might be a, a, a rough thing to do. But believe me, if he brought you through where you are, how can God say you that he's not going to bring you out? Amen. See, because in order to let go of some stuff, you sometimes got to go ahead and walk on that line. Sometimes people don't want you to continue with your vow because it is say they say it will change you. But how is it not good to be changed going toward the Lord? Anybody I know that's being changed by the Lord, I'm celebrating with them. See, because that tells me that God is doing a great work in you. And in order to get that great work done, you got to take the opportunity to do more than just talk about it. I can't tell you about how many times I want to pray. I just got to start praying. I can't tell you about how many times I want to go to church. I just got to go. 
I can't tell you about the times I need to go and do a certain thing. I just got to go do it. And if the Lord has put some stuff on your hands, you watch and see what happened. Even though other people might even say to you, oh my God, it happens all the time. They say it to you, you've been in church too long. You're always on there online. But yet all of a sudden there's blessings going around the house. There's things being fulfilled from different areas. God sometimes blesses the other people and in the midst of that they go, man, what's going on here? And some of them will get to understand that it got to be nothing but God. I know sometimes it's like that because I've seen some stuff being emptied and then turn around and see it full. I've seen where money has been needed and all of a sudden their pot turns out. I've seen where there's homes that needed to be getting and I've seen that people have turned around and said okay. I've seen that places that said no turn around and give you a job. I've seen that individuals who wouldn't leave turn around and turn around and pack their bags. I've seen individuals who said they didn't know God turn out to praise him with all their might. See, because what God can do can work some miracles. But otherwise, for those that happen sometimes, you can't just, just stand there and look about it. You can't just sit there and be on a certain move about it. You got to be about it. You got to step into it. You got to move and absorb it and let him through to you. You can't say, I'm going to do this and not do it. What happens when you say, I'm going to do it and you're not doing your vow to the God that I'm going to do this particular thing and then you took it back. Uh. I'm sorry to let you know that there's no taking back the vows that you gave to God. You might think so, but the Bible just tells you right here in Ecclesiastic, it says that don't let the arrow, it says, and neither thou shall before the angels that it was an error. Because if you said it, it was an error, therefore God, wherefore should God be angry at the, thy voice and destroy the works of thy hand? There's some things that you said because you said them because you meant to say them. And the only reason why you're not doing it is because of your own selves. Uh -huh. Amen. And you're taking the opportunity to do that because you feel that, that I don't want to get caught up in doing this. And everything that you're doing is because of God. Amen. What happens is for some people is that they go to the Lord only once they get their problem solved and then they run back in the opposite direction because they feel that they can handle it. Uh, uh, now, the problem that you're starting to understand, or at least if you hopefully you understood, is you've been doing it for so long and running back to him. And he said, if you had just stayed with me, none of these other problems would have even had occurred. And then you find yourself in another problem because you refuse to continue to move in Christ. And oh, for those who are decided to move in Christ, you find that those problems still occur, but they're like water. They come and they go. They don't have nothing to stick to, so they just slide on by. You'll still have the same problems. But guess what? They slide on by. Amen. Now, when you're not in Christ, when you're not walking in Christ, they don't slide on by so easily. Some of them might slide by, but some of them still stay. That's why we all have issues. That's right. Amen. Because some of the stuff we got to stay and some of the stuff we got, we refuse to let go of in our minds, our hearts and our souls. And even though we try our best sometimes to do that, every once in a while, that still little ugly thing pops up. Mm -hmm. You might be a wonderful person, but you might have a bad attitude. And it might not be every day. It just might be on certain times. Or it might be one person that makes you have that bad attitude. 
and you'll say to yourself, that person makes me mad when I get to them. Well, how can that person make you mad if you won't allow them to make you mad? That means that you allow them to have some power in something that you shouldn't have them have them have power in. I'm trying to help somebody today. It don't mean a thing if you don't make a change. See, because if you don't make a change, then everything that you're saying is coming out of your mouth doesn't have any substance. Mm. My Lord. That's as worse as those people out here who say to themselves that they're getting ready to get married and in the back of their mind they already have planned for the divorce. Uh, 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 uh. There's so many things going on that we have to pay contact to and stuff. some of the things that we need to continue to strengthen up on and some stuff we need to continue to be with and be around. But yet we still take the opportunity to do the wrong things. People of God, I'm just trying to bring you someplace. I need you to take the opportunity to know that when God is moving in your life, let him move in your life. And amen, I know there's going to be interference from every particular places because entities don't want you to have it. And there's certain people who don't want you to move in this direction. And there's certain people at the moment that you mention God, they get an attitude with you. The same ones that used to be your friend before, they sometimes get distance for you. But that's okay if they get distance. It's not upon them, upon their problems. It's they they don't dictate who you are. Amen. You dictate who you are. Amen. And maybe when they looking at you, they might say, I think I might need to check this out. Because in some particular way, it's got to be God. And you know when that starts happening, because every once in a while they walk by and the next thing they know, they just say, hey, man, pray for me. And you, your response could be, I'm going to pray for you, but you got to pray too. Amen. Because I, I could pray for you. And then <laughs> let's put it this way. If I pray for you, and the blessings came down and they came on me, how would you feel about it? Uh, but if I pray for you, if you pray for yourself and I'm praying for you, that means you're going to get blessed doubly. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You need to, you need to know I pray for you and some things get removed and some stuff get around you. You'd be like, yeah, I feel a little bit better. But if you put your own prayers in there, guess what happened? You're able now to go out there and activate your shield. Amen. Which is the word of God. Amen. And in order to do that, you can't just sit there and look at it and look from the sidelines. You can't just be there on the things. You just can't be on the court. Ain't that right, Brother Steve? I can't put you on the court and you stand in the corner and think you ain't never going to touch the basketball. Uh -huh. Amen. Somewhere along the line, you got to do it, even if it means that all your job is to go out there and pass the ball. Uh. You got to do it. Because the moment that you feel that you don't want to do that, there's somebody over there eager enough to go out there to want to do it. They Maybe they might not can do it as good as you, but God said, I can use anything to do it and accomplish what I need to accomplish. He said, but I need you to have the opportunity that if you're going to walk in my way, walk with me. Yeah, there's going to be problems. Yeah, there's going to be doubts. Yeah, there's going to be times that you're going to say, Lord, is this worth it? Amen. It's going to be times where you're going to say, Lord, is this worth it? And you're going to say, Lord, is it worth it? And he's going to say, yes, it's worth it. Because in my father's house, there are many mansions. Amen. And if it was not so, I would not have told you. All I need you to do is walk in this direction. 
He said, you make a step, I'll make one too. Amen. Some of us sometimes are afraid to try some stuff. I'm going to do something new, but it's, it's, it's hard for you. That includes me too. I don't want to do something new sometimes. Or sometimes some things are old, but they have new stuff with it. Amen. But I learned that if I go out here and try it, I'll be like Mikey. I might just like it. I have to take the opportunity to understand what God is trying to do. He's trying to bring us into different places and different levels and trying to move you in certain areas. But he said, I can't move you on your own because you got free will. And if you don't move yourself, how are you going to move? You're going to be stuck on the highway and everybody else around you. Amen. Well, let me tell you something. There's people in life right now that you know that are stuck in a certain decade. And you say to yourself, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, there's somebody that you probably know that's stuck in, in, in the 80s. And you think about the 80s because the 80s was good for them. Somebody that was stuck in the 50s. Somebody stuck in the 60s. Somebody stuck in the 70s. Somebody stuck in the year 2000. Because in the year 2000, it was great for them. 98 was great for them. And they wish every every year was like 98 because that was that they considered to be their best year. Because other things did not occur. But maybe they got to look at it differently. That even though some things didn't occur, maybe it was just time to make a different change. Sometimes we got to try something new. Or sometimes we got to try some stuff that happens again. Uh. There used to be a time in my life that I did not like okra. I thought okra was the most terrible vegetable I ever tasted. I, every time I looked at it, it tasted it. Yuck, 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 yuck. I hated it. One day I had some okra not that long ago. And I tasted it. And I was like, man, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Uh, the vitamins and the nutrients within it is good for me, and I needed it. And the body was saying, look, this right here is what you needed, because as I was eating, it just tastes so good. Every once uh, in a while, you have some things that you have to retry again, because... They were never, they weren't never just putting on no, it was just denied. It wasn't the time for you to have it because it wasn't the season for it. Amen. But instead of saying, man, I should have took it or I should have done this or I could have done that or I should have made that call. And if somebody probably thinking about it right now, I should have called somebody this morning. Well... Don't forget that the afternoon is still available. Uh -uh. I just want you to know it don't mean a thing if you don't make that change. Somebody's got to be able to do Amen. that. I'm not talking that this message was for you. This message was for me. Because I need to make some changes in some certain things. I'm going to change how I preach. I'm going to change how I teach. You know, I'm going to change how I talk. And I'm not talking about here, I'm going to change how I talk when I talk with my wife, when I talk with my children, when I talk with my family. Sometimes you sit back and once you have a time to reflect like God is allowing us to do, we get to see the things that make a difference and the things that don't. We get a chance to see a lot of things and we get a chance to have a lot of understanding. And once we have those understandings, we understand just this. God is just that good and that he allows us to be there and that because of the fact that he's made his changes he says I'm giving you these things and I'm not changing anything for you I put everything that I'm going to tell you that I'm going to do in those book and you'll read it and you'll find it and he changes not 
And he said that he's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. And if he's going to take care of you, he's going to take care of you. And if he doesn't like it, it's already in the book that he doesn't like it. Amen. So there's some people out here that are reading some stuff in the book and think, well, well maybe God doesn't is not looking at that. If God said it, if it's in the Bible, God, that means that God said it in there. And don't get me wrong, don't get upset. That includes witchcraft and idolatry. That includes that includes sea sayers and seekers. That includes homosexuality, immorality. It includes a lot of things of those nature. And if you want to know about what the things that God hates, go Google it up. Google it right now if you like. And tell me, there's a spot in there in the Bible. I don't know if it's, if it's in, the, in Psalms. And it tells you that what the things that God hates. Seven things. Amen. You'll find it in there. It's in the Bible. You should read about it. So you'll get an understanding. So that you'll know where you can't tread. Okay. That you'll know how to have to do it. And now that I told you about it, that means that now it ain't on me, it's on you because I told you. So now you're going to have to take the opportunity to look it up and find it. And if you can't find it, send me an email and we'll go over it together. Word of the Lamb at Outlook.com Amen. I wanted to let you know this. Amen. I'm through. I'm done. I wanted to give you the understanding. And once again, my title for today is It Don't Mean a Thing If You Don't Make That Change. Come out of the lip service. Telling somebody what they want to hear. It's better sometimes to tell them that you won't want to hear or don't tell them nothing at all. Your truth will set you free, they say. You just have to understand to know when to tell them the truth and when to be silent. Mm -hmm. My job is not to hurt your feelings. My job is to point you in the direction of what thus says the Lord. So maybe sometimes we have to say to ourselves, well, what does the Bible say? And from there... We need to make sure we do some stuff. Amen. And with that being said, I'm going to ask if there's anybody on the line who has said to themselves that I'm ready to make a choice. I've talked so much. I rattled around so many areas, but I haven't put my death into God. And I like to be able to do that but I haven't done it because I haven't took the opportunity to be saved. I've been afraid to walk in that area and say I'm saved because I think there will be a change in the areas in the, from the, my lifestyle and the things that I'm doing. Well, if your lifestyle doesn't line up with the word, God will change it if you will allow it to happen. And it will change it for your good. And oh yeah... Your friends going to come and go regardless. Amen. If there's someone out there today, hallelujah. And if you're desiring to be saved, hallelujah. Would you come? Would you come? We ask you, would you come? Thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, God. Hallelujah. If there's somebody out there who's said to themselves that I've dropped the ball, that I might have not walked in the direction I needed to walk in. I've done a few things that have gone on throughout the day or throughout the week, throughout the, the month that I am not proud of doing, and I need to change it back. I know you, Lord, and I know how wonderful you are. I know that you are a loving God, a forgiving God, and Trust in God. I also know that you are judge, judgment as, as well, Father. 
And Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus, God, that you touch the people who are thinking like this right now, Father, who said to themselves, I really want to get it one more try. I want to try myself anew. And I want to ask them, Father, they repeat after me. Father, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus. Father, I ask you that you forgive me of everything that I have done, said, did, thought, or even dreamed. Father, I ask you that you will try me one more time. I ask you that you will wash me in your blood and make me white as snow. I ask you that you heal me in every area, Father. And God, I ask you that this time, Father, that I will not just talk about it, but I will be about it. Father, I ask you that you continue to strengthen me in every area. I thank you right now for the doors that you have closed. I thank you right now for your grace and your mercy. And I ask you these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. And if you have prayed this prayer, then we know right now that you have taken the opportunity to come on back into the fold, to know that you're there. Because we have all have strayed away, we all have moved away, and we all have find ourselves moving back. Amen. Glory to God. And for those who are in need of prayer, those who know that there's a prayer that goes through, need somebody that is in need of some prayer and some praying, glory to God. Understand that just this, I'm going to pray a general prayer over each and every body. Father God, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, I ask you that you look upon each and every one of them, Father. God, I ask you that you touch them from the top of their heads to the bottom of their feet. Father, I ask you that you go to all the four corners of the earth, and I ask you that you bless each and every individual upon it. Lord, I ask you that you send comfort to every family member. And Lord, I ask you right now, even in our own community, in our own collective in our own areas father i ask you to send comfort to the outlaw family god to the gaddy family god god i ask you to send comfort father god to the narang family to the thomas family to the Bryan family to the hooks family god to the morales family god god i ask you to send comfort to the Chappelle family god i ask you to send comfort to the miller family father to the Bryan family father because we even individuals have passed away, not even from the coronavirus, God, some from cancer, Father. Cousins have passed away, Father. And family members, Father. Father, we lost a family member of notoriety to, today, Father. We ask you that you, you bless them, Father God. Look upon the Pillington family, God. In the name of Jesus. We ask you to look upon Apostle Ramson, Father. For that was his family and, and his Godfather. And Father, I ask you that you touch him, Father. Father, we ask you because... He's known, Father God, by a, a lot of names, but we know him, Father God, just as little Richard, Father. But we ask you to touch him, Father. Bless him, Father. We ask you that you be comfort to the family, God, comfort to all the friends, Father. But, Lord, I also ask you that every individual on this line and everybody around them, Father God, that each one who has lost somebody, those are just as important, Father, because those are your people and lord i ask you that you send comfort to them father and for the ones that are fighting right now father god on the ventilators the ones that are fighting to get well the ones that are trying their best to keep pushing through father i ask you that you pour into their ear the word fight don't give up yes thank you in the name of jesus and for those who are suffering with every particular thing from headaches to, to
to heartaches, to sicknesses and all kind of diseases, Father. All those fight that we can be where we need to be. We ask all these things in your humble name, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Ha. Amen and amen. And amen. Father, I have done what you have asked me to do. I have done what you have asked me to do, Father. I've done what you asked me to do. And Father, I ask you to bless each one on this line. That they put it into their mind that it don't mean a thing if they don't make that change. I ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all. Of us. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I do see you. I hear you. My sister. Amen. Glory to God. I will take care of it right now. I'm not going to dismiss without doing that. Father God, in the matchless and mighty name of Jesus, I ask you to look upon Sister Morales right now, Father. I ask you that you touch her from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet, Father. I ask you that you cover all her bases, Father God. I ask you that the doors that need to be closed, closed, Father. The ones that need to be open, open, Father God. And I ask you right now that you'll make a way, Father God, that even the people who are missing will come back, Father God. I ask you that you'll line her up in the right direction, Father God, and that you will pour an anointing upon her and upon her children, Father, from the oldest to the youngest, Father, that it will be like never before. Father, I connect the chains that was broken, Father, and I break the binds that are trying to divide them, Father. In the name of Jesus, we cancel anything that is not of you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, there will not and shall not be, Father God. And in the name of Jesus, I ask you that you return what the enemy has stolen in the name of Jesus, and I come against any particular ill spotting, scotting thought, ill spoken word pointing in her direction right now in the name of Jesus. And I come against any particular thing that was fed, anything that was spoken, anything that was even mentioned in her sleep, God, that was negative, that wasn't right, that was moving in the ways. And I ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you break her free, Father from every particular thing, Father God, that is holding her up, God. In the name of Jesus, I stand in her gap and I come against every particular entity trying to hold her down, Father God. Mm. She's precious in your sight, Father. You call her a treasure, Father. And Father, I ask you right now, God, that you put your loving arms around her. That you will continue to be with her in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. And God bless you all. I appreciate each and every you. one of you. Amen. Bye. Glory to God. God. God bless you and I thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Evangelist Lady Sunshine for all your help this morning, for all your help today. God bless you and your strength and your needed. I ask, I ask you that God return everything that you have given right back to you in the name of Jesus, that it will be an overflow like never before. And Father, I thank you for the victory that evangelist Diane Hooks has, Father, in her body, Father God, that she will continue to be made whole in all ways possible. And Father, I ask you that you look upon evangelist outlaw, Father God, and that you will touch her family right now in the name of Jesus, and you will give her strength, Father God, to speak what you have spoken to her, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God. And God, I cancel out anything or any foul thoughts, any area, Father God, that is not of you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And Father, 
I ask you to look upon the Chappelle family, look upon Anita, look upon Steve. Bless them, Father. Look upon their children, their grandchildren, their great-grands, God. I ask you to bless them like never before, Father God, that it will be an overflow in their household, Father. Look upon their children, God. Bless them in every way possible. Look upon their spouses, Father. Bless them in every way possible, Father God. Open the floor, Father, even the animals, Father God. Bless them like never before, Father. And I ask you that you cover in every area, Father. I ask you to look upon Steve's father. I ask you to bless him and touch him, Father. I ask you to look upon his brothers, God. I ask you to touch them in a special way, Father God. I ask you to be an overflow in every area. And Lord, have your way, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I also ask you to look upon Sister Bridget, Father. I ask you that you open up the doorways, Father. I ask you to close some things, Father God. And any interference right now in the name of Jesus. I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus. Hmm. And Father, I thank you for who she is. I thank you for the direction that you've given her. And I ask you that you continue to bless her in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I ask you to bless my first lady. I ask you to bless my children. I ask you to bless me, amen. Father. And I ask yes, you that Lord. you do all these things in Jesus' name. And Father, Amen. I ask you that you heal them in every area, that there will be no backlash in any direction. And Father, everything that they do from this moment on, Father God, would not be because they're talking about it. It's because they're getting ready to put their foot forward, Father. Faith without works is nothing, Father. But faith, when it wants this together with works, God, bring forth blessings. And Father, I ask that they be blessed beyond blessed. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you all. God bless you all. Happy Mother's amen. Day to God you. Enjoy, en enjoy, enjoy, yeah, enjoy, enjoy. Okay, God bless you. God bless you on the line.